Number 40. Bird bones have air pockets in them to reduce their weight. This also gives them an average density significantly less than that of the bones of other animals. Suppose an ornithologist weighs a bird bone in air and in water and finds its mass is 45 grams and its apparent mass when submerged is 3.6 grams and bone is watertight. Letter A, what mass of water is displaced? All right, um, so let's take a look at these uh, two cases first. All right, so here's the bone, which is represented as a box. That's in air. And now the bone is in water. We know it is fully submerged. Okay, by the way, if the bone was not fully submerged, if it was floating somehow, then the bone would actually have an apparent weightlessness to it. Okay, so anytime it has an apparent weight in water, you know it's fully submerged. Uh, because... That means that, you know, in order to weigh this thing, there has to be something underneath it, right, in which this is net, which the net force on this item is pointing straight down. And it's, you know, causing some, uh, causing some equal but opposite force in the, in the scale. And that's how it's then measuring the, the weight. Any case, um, so let's just take a look. So this is, there, there is a certain, uh, the force that, or I should say the weight of the object in air Right, would be equal to the force of the object in air. Now, the we can expand on this too. I'm thinking about if I want to do that now. Let's just leave this alone for now. All right, that this would be the 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 weight of the object in air. All right, which it's the same as the force, the net force on the object in air. Now, what you have to remember is that when you measure this thing in air, there's still a column of air above it. Okay. Similarly, in this case as well, there's still a column of air above it. So what that means is that since there's columns of air above both, okay, this force vector will be represented in this picture somehow and somewhere. I mean, it's the same thing. You still have a force due to gravity here. Really, I actually should, instead of let me calling this air, let me call this the force due to gravity. All right. Now, there's still a force due to gravity here in this picture, all right? Gravity hasn't changed, assuming it's at the same height relative to the center of the Earth. The force due to gravity has not changed. It's the same, okay, as it was in air. The difference, though, is that the apparent weight of this thing has changed. So what that, you know, in terms of interpreting what that means, that means that the net force, this is not the net force, but the net force on this item is pointing down also, but it's of smaller magnitude. Okay, so this is the net force vector. And that force is a, is basically the, a, we'll call it the apparent force because it's they're talking about the apparent mass. Now, if you notice the way this is organized, if you have a, uh, you know, two vectors pointing downward and this is the net vector, all right, which is smaller than one of the, uh, well, I'm going to say one of the two because there's another there's another vector in the problem. I haven't drawn it yet. But you have to think about this. If this is the summation of all the forces in the problem, and here's one of them, there has to be another force pointing up, right? That's not quite as large as the force due to gravity, all right? Because when you sum this black vector with this red vector, you have to yield a net result that has a vector pointing downward, all right? So now this would basically, this is the buoyant force. The buoyant force is the force pointing up, okay? Now the buoyant force, according to Archimedes' principle, is equal to the weight of the liquid or the fluid, whatever was displaced, okay? It's the weight of the fluid displaced. Now in this problem, they told us that it's being weighed in water, okay? So this is essentially the weight of the water, all right? which is essentially the force due to gravity, right, uh, on the water, okay, that's displaced, on the water that's displaced. I mean, you can, all of these kind of mean the same thing. So now, let's now try to figure out, or let's try to create an equation now. So hopefully this should make sense. Now what we need to do is create our equation. We know that the net force will equal the summation of the two forces, aka the buoyant force, which I'm just going to call the, the weight of the water, the weight of the water displaced, minus then, right, the force due to gravity on the bone itself. Remember, it's the same thing as the force due to gravity or the weight of the object in air. So I'm going to call this the weight of the bone in air. Okay, weight of the bone 
bone in air. Now, the only thing is, right, I, this is cool, but don't forget your net force is pointing downward, and therefore this has to be a negative vector, okay? Now, we have our equation, okay? Let's remember that uh, this, I, I actually couldn't change, actually, you know what, let me change, this is good, right? That's what I have over here, but let me, let me try to use similar terminologies in the formula. Remember that this is the net force, which was the same as the apparent force, which is the same as the apparent weight, Okay, so let me just change that. They're all the same. I just want all W's in my equation here. So let's have the, this is the apparent weight. Okay, now we are, uh, let's expand on each of these weights. You know that they're all multiplied by gravity, right? Weight is just simply, weight is a force and it's just mg. So this is negative apparent mass times gravity equals then the mass of the object in water multiplied by gravity minus the weight of the Object meaning the bone in air times gravity. Uh, I, why did I say weight? I think I said weight. I don't know. I don't know. Mass. I meant mass. Mass of the bone in air times gravity. So notice the gravities cancel. And what are we left with now? We're, uh, we're left with the negative of the apparent mass equals the mass of the water displaced minus then the mass of the bone in air. So if I want to solve for this, all I have to do is add this term on over to the left-hand side, right? And I'm going to have an equation that now looks like this. It's going to be the, ma oh, I have two MAs, I apologize, guys, I just noticed that now. Um, meaning this is the apparent mass and this is the, I'm just going to call this the ma uh, M sub B, okay, for mass of the bone. Just remember that that's in air, okay? I don't want the two A's because they are different. So now the equation will look like this, the mass of the bone in air minus now the apparent mass will equal the mass of the bone in water. Or, excuse me, the mass of the water, not the mass of the bone in water, but the mass of the water. So here is the equation. So now we can simply plug in the numbers, right? The mass of the bone in air, they told us, was 45 grams, okay? 45 grams, minus then the, ma the apparent mass, which they told us was 3.6 grams, and now all we have to do is just do our subtraction here, right? So it's 45 minus 3.6, and it should come out to be 41.4, okay? So, uh, yeah, so 41.4, this is grams now, and that is indeed the mass of the water that was displaced, okay? So here is the answer for letter uh, A. Now let's take a look at letter B. So letter B says, what is the volume of the bone? So now in terms of letter B, I'll put it over here. The volume of the bone, we're going to be using this equation. Why are we using the equation? Well, we have to remember, uh, we do know the density of water, right? It didn't tell us, but that's probably a density you're going to have to memorize. So if we know the density of water and we know the mass of the water that was displaced, can't we find the volume of the water that was displaced? Yes, right? And then the, so let's do that, right? I know it asks for the volume of the bone, but... Uh, we have to find that by finding the volume of the water, all right? Or we can, or you know what we can do? We can do this. We can state this 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 truism. We can say that the the volume of because the bone is totally submerged here. This is why it's true because it's totally submerged. That's the only reason. The volume of the bone equals the volume of the water that was displaced. That has to be true because the bone is fully submerged. If the bone was not fully submerged and it was floating, then this is not true because only part of it now is submerged and therefore only part of the water, a part of the total volume of the water, uh, me, what am I talking about? Part of the total volume of the bone uh, is displaced in terms of the water. That's what number 36 dealt with. So check that problem out. Now, if I know that this is true, Okay, then I create my equation that the density of the water will be equal to the mass of the water divided by the volume of the water. I can simply now substitute, because the volume of the water is equal to the volume of the bone, I can simply substitute this on into this equation. And what that gives me now is the density of the water will be equal to the mass of the water divided by the vo uh, volume of the, I was going to say velocity, by the volume of the bone. Now they're asking us for volume of the bone, so just literally, you know, do some cross multiplication here. So the volume of the bone, or do some algebra at least. So volume of the bone will be equal to the mass of the water displaced divided by the density of the water. So now simply, 
here's the mass of the water that was displaced. So this is going to be 41.4. All right. Uh, remember, this is in terms of grams. All right. That means that you need your density of water to be in terms of grams as well. And the and or you could convert this to kilograms if you wanted. I don't. It doesn't. I don't care. All right. Um, you, you just have to be consistent. So and it doesn't ask us specifically what units they wanted in. So you can do it either way. Now uh, remember that the density of water, okay, is equal to one gram per cubic centimeter. And remember, a cubic centimeter is by definition a milliliter. So either term should be fine. So we're going to divide oh, the volume, the, excuse me, the density we're going to plug in here is just simply one. So we realize the volume of the bone is going to simply be 41.4 grams per now, uh, not grams, 41.4 <laughs> cubic centimeters. You can also have written 41.4 milliliters. They're the same thing. Anyway, that takes care of letter B. And then finally, letter C, what is its average density? What does its refer to? It's referring to the bone. So uh, down here on the bottom left, guys, in order to find the average density, let's use this formula on the upper right again. Okay, so the average density uh, is going to be equal to the mass, or I should say the average density of the bone, right? Look at the consistency is equal to the weight of the bone, uh, the mass of the bone. My goodness, why? What is going on? I don't know. I, I think I need another cup of coffee. I don't know. Um, divided by then the volume of the bone. So we do know the we do know the mass of the bone, and we do know the uh, volume of the bone, right? So we can now just find this out. Remember the mass of the bone. This is the uh, actual mass of the bone that was measured in air. Okay, it's forty five grams, and then you're going to divide that by your uh, volume in. Uh, in uh, cubic centimeters, all right, so 41.4, and then from here, you will arrive at your answer, 45 over 41.4, 1.09, okay, if we consider rounding, so we have uh, 1 1.0, 1.09, and this is, remember, in grams per cubic centimeter. Your answer might differ slightly, right, by if you're doing it in kilogram per cubic meter, you just multiply by 1,000 here. But in any case, those are the answers. Guys, hope this helped. Please remember to help us out. Uh, give us a hand, subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends. That'd be awesome. We appreciate it so much, and we look forward to helping you with more questions. Take care.